This is Heart Rhythm TV, and I'm Dan Aliesh, here with Late Breaking Clinical Science. And I'm joined today by Dr. Elad Anter of Shamir Medical Center. Uh, today, you know, we're going to discuss the dual energy um, lattice tip catheter for ablation of a persistent atrial fibrillation. 432 patients in a randomized clinical trial comparing the dual energy catheter with traditional thermal RFA ablation. Congratulations on the great study. First question I have for you, a really unique catheter design. Can you elaborate first on, on the catheter design? Yes, thank you, Dan. Thank you for having me. Um, so the catheter is a large tip focal catheter. It's a nine millimeter, 19 on mesh catheter that is compressible. It has nine mini electrodes as in a central reference electrode. So what you really get is um, nine local unipolar electrograms, which are highly clean. So this catheter provides, in addition to the ablation capabilities that we'll get to them in a second, really high density, high resolution electrograms. But as far as the ablation uh, goes, the catheter can deliver both RF energy and PF energy, and all the energy comes out from the sprouts of the nitinol mesh. So it's like a, like a sphere that ablates from its entirety. entirety. Um, RF energy, as we all know, is RF energy. However, even in this sense, this is a temperature control or temperature limited um, application for safety reasons. Um, you know, no one talk about it, but actually we discussed there, there is no event at all of steam pops or safety um, events in regard to the RF because the, the lattice tape has such a large surface area and, and the current density is relatively low. So you get large transzero lesions, overlapping lesions in a safe, in a safe manner. And broader contact force, and, right? And broader contact force, right, because it's, um, because it's like compressible. And you know, the other thing is that because of the large surface area, you don't have those like, you know, high contact force points. And that's why, you know, in the entire study, you haven't seen like one case of perforation. Um, you don't have like, you don't have a sharp metal tip. You have a very compliant material. So this is like the RF part, but on the PF part, yeah. um, you know, you, um, you have four seconds application. That's something else that we haven't spoke, you know, we haven't spoken about too much, but if you look on technologies, typically to apply those trains, you stay in the same location and you apply like therapies like for 15, 20 seconds. This is like four second application. Um, so it's, it's also a nice feature of this, um, of this catheter. So you have the mapping, the RF and the PF. So I think that, you know, a lot of great things that you just said, right? And that we think about PFA and we think about all these novel offerings, but we also have to think about cost, right? Yeah. So in this situation, we have the ability to eliminate the need for a mapping catheter because we have a high density mapping catheter in the, in the ablation catheter. Yeah. A couple of things I also wanted to ask you about. You know, we always think about contact importance for PFA and contact force a bit for PFA, contact force for RF. What metrics of contact does the catheter offer? The, the, the catheter can determine contact with tissue. It doesn't give you a number. You're applying 15 or 20 grams. Yeah. I don't think it's really needed. Yeah. What we really know from all the data gathered, you want to be in contact with the tissue. Yeah. And this platform does give you this information. Yeah. Regarding like, you know, what you just said about the cost effectiveness, I do think it's going to be important with any, any of the new technologies. Now here, what I didn't mention is that, yes, it's, it's mapping and ablation catheter in one, in one uh, platform, one catheter, but it also saves transeptal punctures. Data that I didn't have time to, sh to, uh, to show, but it's in the paper, is that in the control arm, 40% of the cases were done with dual two trans transeptal punctures and every time exchange of catheters. Here you have one transeptal puncture, yeah. one catheter, no exchanges, so um, cost, cost efficient, but also it's safer. Yes, right. Yeah. So, you know, all very interesting. Now moving on to ever more interesting data that you reported on the effectiveness. Yeah. Um, so clearly showing non-inferiority, but I'll let you elaborate on your results. Yeah. So first, like we have to remember, this is a study on patient with persistent atrial fibrillation, different population from most of the studies done in uh, PFA. 
definitely the first randomized study in persistent AF patients. Um, outcomes in the, in, in the 74, 73, 74 percent, um, these are great. These are very encouraging results. Now, it was not inferior to the control arm. The outcome of the control arm was around 65 percent. This was, was, it was like 73 percent or so. But if you noticed in the Kaplan-Meier curves, those curves separated from the beginning, remain separated. And when you look carefully on the difference in the outcomes, there was like an 80%, there was an 8% advantage to the interventional technology. That was still within the 15% non-inferiority margin. The study did not reach superiority, but you could see on these curves that it was close to its superiority, but you know, it, it wasn't tested for superiority. Yeah. The sample size wasn't yeah. big enough to show superiority. A secondary endpoint, a clear separation, yeah. just missing that threshold. Yeah, right. yeah. So yeah. I guess uh, as a final point, Tell me a little bit about safety and what you observe with this technology. Yeah, so I think a few things. One, I think we covered before, the compliant nature of this Sphere 9 prevent high force. We did not see any tamponades or any effusions whatsoever. We did not see any permanent phrenic nerve paralysis, and I think that's kind of like what we see as a class effect with PFA. We haven't seen esophageal injuries and not fistulas. So I think these are like the takes from all the PFA platforms. I think this is the advantage. Um, you know, in general, when you think about the safety um, outcomes of this study, 1.4% complication. This is like the lowest I've seen for any study. It, has, it, may, it may have to do with the experienced operators, but in general, this is a very encouraging result. Well, you, um, you, you showed study. your learning curve. Yeah. As far as people going out, that, you know, progressing very quickly, right? Yeah, like, you know, operators did like six cases on average and did it so, so efficient. Remember, those operators, they've done thousands of cases with standard point-by-point -point technology. So doing six cases and still being more efficient than the conventional system um, speaks for itself. And it's encouraging to our fields yeah. and to our upcoming fellows, trainees, and young attendings. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Dan. Thank yeah. you for having me. And thank you all for tuning in to Heart Rhythm TV. This paper will be published in Nature Medicine and linked to this video. Thank you.